Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a recently released to market HF amplifier, which is a great match for QRP radios. This is the MX P150M with an output power of between 100 to 130 watts, with a drive level of just less than 10 watts. It covers from 80 meters right up to 10 meters, which is essentially most of the HF handbands. Well, excluding 160 meters. Now, this unit is not small and it weighs a massive 4 kilograms. A bag of accessories are included, which contains a pretty hefty inline fuse power cable, a 3.5 millimeter terminated cable for use with PTT control, and on one end it's left unterminated so you can connect a connector of your choice, which is compatible with whichever radio you're going to use. Now the little bag contains another 3.5 mm jack and a DIN type plug which is suitable for some Yaesu radios and even Zygu radios. Now first impressions of this amplifier's construction is pretty darn good with the simplistic front controls to the full size heatsink which covers the entire footprint of the whole amplifier. Now the front panel hosts a power on and off switch, a forward power LED indicator bar, a set of progressive LEDs for reflective power and a set of indicators to tell you which band is selected and on the right side you have that band select rotary control. Now on the rear of the amplifier we have a 13.8 volt DC input and according to the specification this amplifier will draw between 12 to 20 amps when in use. So just make sure to use a suitable power supply or battery. We then have a send 3.5 mm socket, which is used to put the amplifier into PTT mode. Now this is normally connected to the send or PTT port on your radio. Unfortunately, there is no band control via this port or any other ports. And that's something I would have liked to see and it would have been a nice touch. However, I guess turning the knob on the front isn't really a big deal if you're gonna have this amp on a desk in front of you. We then have two SO239 sockets, and one of which connects to your transceiver, and the other goes off to your antenna or your antenna tuner. So let's take some power tests, and for this I'll use a 5 watt SDR transceiver as the source, and then connected on the output of the meter will be a remote tuned N fed wire antenna. Now unfortunately, I didn't have a dummy load which can go above 100 watts to hand, hence why I'm using an antenna for this particular test. So first I'll check the power output coming from the radio on 80 meters. And here we have around five watts. And then if we turn on the power amplifier, we can see nearly 140 watts. And that's just with five watts drive. Now this would most likely be better if we was going into a perfectly matched dummy load, but we kind of have to make do with what we've got on hand. Next, we'll try the 40 meter band. And here we can see the radio is outputting still around five watts. With the amp turned on and the 40 meter band selected using that front rotary knob, we can see an output of around 115 watts. Again, we see an output of around five watts on the 20 meter band just from the radio. And then with the amp turned on and with the correct band selected, we see an output of around 115 watts. Now up on 15 meters, we have just under four watts coming from the radio. And then with the amp turned on, we're seeing an output power of around 96 watts. Up on 10 meters, we see an output of around five watts directly from the radio. And then with the amp turned on again, with the 10 meter band selected, we see an output of around 80 watts. Now the amplifier doesn't have a specific setting or markings for the 17 or 12 meter handbands. But after speaking with the manufacturer, you can use the 15 meter selection for the 17 meter band and then the 10 meter selection for the 12 meter band. When I tested these bands with the amplifier, it gave around 80 watts on the 17 meter band with a 5 watt drive, and then around 90 watts on the 12 meter band with a 5 watt drive. Of course, you can see here that the antenna match was not ideal, but perfectly within limit for the amp. In fact, one of the specifications for the MXP150 amplifier is that if the SWR goes above 2.5, the inbuilt SWR protection will kick in and does shut off the amplifier, which in turn protects your radio and the amplifier from damage due to too much reflective power. 
Now, I think all decent amps will probably have this feature, so it's nice to see it in this one. So what kind of radios would be used with an amplifier like this? Well, one radio could be the Zygu G106C. Now, this is a very capable 5 watt HF transceiver. It covers from 80 meters up to 10 meters with a receive from 500 kilohertz up to 30 megahertz. It has an accessory port on the back, which can be linked easily to the amplifier. Now using the supply cable, I terminated it with the supplied plug and just connected between the back of the radio and the amplifier. Now this allows the amplifier to go into transmit mode when I press the PTT button on the radio's microphone. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey. Yeah, you're also 59, lovely and strong. Thanks a lot, 73. Of course, using the MXP150M amplifier with other radios is also possible, like the 6100 or the new Zygu 6200, which have an output power of less than 10 watts. Even radios like the Yaesu FT818 or the ICOM705 would be supported. But another test would be to use a 5 watt SDR transceiver like this. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, yeah, thanks for the call. You'll find a nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're also 5959 as well. Thanks for the contact, M0 DQW. Yeah, no problem, Matthew. It uh, sounds really good. It's a uh, nice, clear audio and a punchy signal. But problem, 73, bye bye. Yeah, 73, bye bye. Now, for those that are interested in seeing the internals of this amplifier, then let me quench your thirst. The bottom plate comes off just by removing eight screws. Then just lift up that bottom vented base plate to reveal the main amplifier board, the filter board, and of course the front facing control panel. Now when I took the base plate off, I was interested to see what transistors were actually fitted, but it looks like they're probably custom made or they've been rebadged. I couldn't really find any information about these particular transistors or at least the print that's on them. Maybe you can do some research and find out what they actually are or whether they're being custom made. Now I'll leave a link down in the description below if you want to go and check out this amplifier yourself and find out more information. You can obviously download the manual as well if you want to look deeper into the specifications. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video and until the next one, stay safe, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.